Jackson, on behalf of my co-hosts Isaac Simpson and Maria Perry, I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Short on Shorts. Our special guest reviewer this week is actress and TV personality Nina Senekar, and the final film we reviewed was A Man Wakes Up, directed by Voki Kalfanen. The film isn't publicly available just yet, but you can follow along with its progress on their website. The link is in the description below. Enjoy our review. Last but not least, we have A Man Wakes Up. Uh, it is directed by Boki Kalfayan and written and starring Amos Glick and also starring Jimmy Slonina. Um, it is a wordless uh, short comedy that is very much focused on physical comedy. Um, it involves a man who lives a very lonely, ritual-based life who wakes up with another man in his bed one day and the man refuses to leave his house. Um, it's a pretty slapsticky, fun thing. It's currently on the festival circuit. It'll be available online soon. This is Glick's first film. They're sort of a Vegas team. Uh, so Kevin, tell us what you thought of this movie. What I thought of this movie, I, well, the thing that stuck out to me the most, honestly, was that I, this was another movie that I thought kind of was in the middle. It couldn't decide what, what it was really about. Um, or at least I couldn't, for sure. I couldn't tell for the whole movie whether this guy was real, the guy who showed up, or whether it was just something in his head, right? And for most of the movie, I thought it was something, just a thing that happened in his head. Um, but that certainly wasn't consistent. And I guess I, um, I thought it was a fun, I don't know, it was like a fun exploration of routine and loneliness and you know, and the need to sort of break that up and what happens when something that you don't want or that doesn't expect forces you to change. But I honestly was pretty distracted because I, it just felt like the, it felt like the filmmakers didn't know, right? Um, and that might be me just reading too much into it and projecting my own things onto it, but that's how it felt. It felt like they couldn't decide whether this was a real, or, or if they did decide, they didn't do enough to develop their decision, right? I definitely spent like half the film thinking that it was a metaphor for a mental disorder and then that kind of didn't work out. So I was lost. It was also very distracting for me, I think. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, cause he's very, he's so schooled and very neat and organized and almost OCD about his ritual and mm -hmm. his, his routine. And then it's disrupted and it feels like, okay, well, is this something about his mental state? And then that didn't quite pan out in a way that that metaphor was played through, unless we were mixing metaphors, I don't know. Right. Yeah. And, at this, and at the same time, and I, I hate to keep harping on things like this, but at the same time it didn't feel like an emotionally truthful response to finding this dude in his house. Right. Like, if you're that guy, right, or any guy, if you're any person, right, and all of a sudden you wake up and there's this strange person in your house, you're going to flip the hell out. And I but just don't I think feel we're like dealing he did with that. The, I think we're dealing with the same thing as in the first film, is that this is a vaudevillian movie. It's not right. taking place in the real world. It's well, taking that's place why in like happy, funny But that's my point, world. is that like, like, so okay, so there's not, there's this response or lack of response that doesn't feel real. So I immediately think it's just make-believe. It's just something in his head. That's why I went there. But then there are definitely moments where that's not consistent, right? And that's why I felt, I, that's why I was distracted the whole time because, you know, sometimes it felt like it was, you know, a, it was a split personality thing or it was, you know, it was all in his head and sometimes it felt like that wasn't it, that he was supposed to be a real guy, right? But you never really knew. I don't know. I mean, it was definitely amusing, but I have the same doubts as the two of them. And um, my, I was also like, well, is it real, is that? And, but then at the end, I decided to believe that that was just in his head. Uh, and that made me like the movie more. Um, but I'm curious, why did you choose that? Why did I choose it? Yes, why did you choose it? Why did it? I choose it? Um, okay. Are we following your theme here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because every week you have to pick something that is at least slightly Slight, homoerotic. Slightly so. gay. <laughs> I got to stick with the, homo, the, the, the gay theme, man. And this was, was this gay? But you see, I didn't see the gay 
I didn't right. see that there was like attraction between the two. Yeah, right. it's interesting. Because a little there, bit. There's so maybe. much. There's so much intimacy. Yeah. Like there's a lot right. of shared space, but there doesn't seem to be any real chemistry. Any chemistry. Yeah. yeah. Which is why that's also part of why I assumed that he was just a part of this other guy right. because it's yeah. like, if there's something wrong with you, you can accept that without necessarily you know, falling in love with that. And I felt like that was what was happening. But again, the metaphor just did not go through for me. Yeah. Right. Well, I picked this partially because it was submitted to us as collaborators. So we're trying to review films that are submitted in that format. But it also stood out. I mean, again, we've said this before. We don't review movies on here that we think are bad ever. So it's, there's always something. I, I would never pick this film if I thought it wasn't didn't have something to offer. I thought it was a little bit weird and mysterious. I thought uh, the performances, the slapstick performances kind of stood out. I think it was way too long. And if it had been a little bit more shorter and condensed, um, it would have been better. Besides that, what I liked about it is I found it to be a uh, very sweet kind of relationship drama that was surprising because it was between these two men that were not lovers and they were not talking and they weren't friends. So it was just like, what is this weird intimate relationship that's happening here? And that was surprising to me. And I felt like that's something you can only do with a short film because it's just so many questions are popping up in your head. And I love the, I love the ending. I won't spoil the ending, but it's this really kind of sweet, weird yeah. ending that's just, it's, I feel like it just kind of works as a short. It's too long. It's way too long. I like the cat. I also like <laughs> and the cat. A cat. The cat was important. To yeah. Me. yeah. Yeah. How do you yeah. know that they weren't lovers? I don't. Just because they didn't show that part of it, a guy wakes up with another guy in the same bed. I think he just needed a friend, honestly. I didn't see any chemistry there, but maybe that's just me. I think it was a metaphor for you have a routine and it's comfortable and then something comes along and upsets that. And that he was that thing embodied. Well, that's what the description on the on the movie kind of said, and, and it shows if you deep get, you analysis know, here if you yeah. get out of your comfort zone you're gonna change your life to better you know it's gonna be you always grow yeah so. and it might be better in, in the end right you know it was an interesting idea i, yeah. de I definitely stole some of the exercises in the morning this yes, this yes yes i definitely yes. stole some of the <laughs> it was working for them you know yeah. they were really in oh, great yeah. shape so <laughs> um yeah, I mean, I think, like, honestly, I watched the, he, he uh, this guy, Amos Glick, funded this on Seed and Spark. He raised $9,000 to do it. And um, he said that he started off wanting to just basically have a physical comedy reel, mm -hmm. right? But then when he started writing, he kind of fell in love with the story. So I think he almost got all the way to having a, a real story, you know what I mean? Uh, but he's kind of still maybe indulged himself a little bit too much in the physical comedy real side of it, mm -hmm. you know? Maybe. And he shouldn't have uh, done so much of that, you know? But otherwise it was sweet and I, it had flavor, it had emotion in it, you oh, know? Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely, it was a neat idea. It definitely was. I mean, he, I mean, I wasn't bored at all, mm -hmm. right? I was just distracted. I want, in fact, I think it's because it was such an interesting idea and it was shot in a really interesting way. There was some sort of, they did some sort of weird thing where, um, I don't know, they were, they used weird lenses on this. Like, I don't know how, I mean, I don't know enough about that stuff to know, but I recognize that there was something very weird in the lenses that they chose to use. Um, and so it was engaging. I was grabbed, but I was just distracted because it felt like they couldn't. But it's definitely, it definitely had a lot of, good things about it and a lot of potential. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I actually, because um, I was so distracted the first time, I ended up going back and watching this one a second time. Because it is, it's really engaging, it's really entertaining. It's still distracting because it's still confusing. But, I mean, I definitely liked it a lot better the second watch through when I wasn't so, like, digging into the details as much as possible to try and figure out what the hell is going on. Yeah, like, what world is this? What's happening, right? Thanks for watching. If you want more information about how Short on Shorts works or how you can submit your film for consideration, or if you want to watch more episodes of Short on Shorts, click on the link at the end of this video if you're watching on Facebook or in the description below if you're watching on YouTube. See you next time.